What's up my fellow actors, Kurt Yu here. We're not gonna be doing the typical acting video today. I actually had a video recorded and edited and ready to share with you, but we're gonna hold off on that because I wanted to spend some time today sharing my thoughts on the tragic murder of George Floyd and the resulting protests that have been happening here in America and around the world. If you don't know what happened, most of you know what happened. If you live in America, you definitely do. If you live in a country that has news that covers America, you know what happened. If you don't, just uh, do a Google search on George Floyd and you'll know what I'm talking about. Um, don't expect any profound statements from me today. Don't expect any enlightened thoughts. Uh, I'm, I just want to share what I'm thinking right now. Obviously, I'm not a black person. Obviously, I can never pretend to understand what it's like to walk in the shoes of any of my black brothers and sisters. But I do want to spend some time today talking about what this one Asian man who lives in America thinks about this situation. The murder of George Floyd by a police officer on May 25th is not an isolated incident. Remember, this came on the heels of Breonna Taylor, who was killed by police officers while she was sleeping in her home. This came on the heels of Ahmaud Arbery, who was hunted down and killed by two people who claimed to be making a citizen's arrest. They hunted him down and killed him while he was jogging in his own neighborhood. So these three incidents happened within three months of each other. And as a result, we're seeing protests. Yesterday we saw protests in all 50 states here in America, and I believe in 18 different countries around the world. And these protests, most of them have been peaceful, but some of them have turned into riots and have turned violent. Does the violence and destruction solve these problems, solve anything? No, and I don't agree with the violence, but I can understand it. The years, the decades, the centuries of racial inequality in America is what led to that violence. The frustration over a long and extended period of time is what led to that violence, not one incident on May 25th. To speak of the history of racial inequality in America is to speak of the history of America. It's a problem. It's been a problem for a long time and it needs to it needs to be fixed and it needs to end. And I'm only speaking about America because I live here in America, but racism is a problem throughout the world. I was born in China. My family moved to the United States when I was very young, but in the country where I was born, black people have faced horrible racism. So it's a, it's a problem and it's something that needs to end and it's something that needs to change here in America and around the world. Injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. Now you may be asking why I'm talking about this on a YouTube channel for acting, and that's a valid question. This channel is called the Acting Career Center. It's not called the Let's Talk About Social Issues Center. And to be perfectly honest with you, I was debating whether or not I should talk about this here. But then I was reminded that historically, the acting profession and the theater has always provided some sort of social commentary and dealt with social issues throughout history. From the Greeks to Shakespeare to modern plays on Broadway, like Hamilton, like the most recent Tony Award winning play, Hades Town. They've all dealt with social issues, even movies and television shows. Look at the most popular TV show in recent history, Game of Thrones. What are some of the themes of that show? Power and the abuse of power. Justice. Oppression. These themes were littered all throughout that show. So I think it is appropriate, even necessary, to talk about social issues 
on an acting YouTube channel. If you want to become an actor in the film and television industry, I think you should know that these issues are front and center in our industry. If you want to work for companies like Disney, Marvel, Netflix, HBO, Hulu, Amazon, all of these companies have taken a public stand and vowed to fight injustice. If you're hoping to become a member of the union one day, if you want to become a card-carrying member of the SAG-AFTRA union, then you should know how our union feels about these issues right now. So these social issues very much affect us as actors. To be an actor is to be a storyteller. Stories shape who we are as people. Think about the books that you've read, the plays that you've seen, the movies that you've seen, the TV shows that you've watched. Think about the ones that have really impacted you, that have left a lasting impression on you. Think about those stories. Think about the characters in those stories who you've identified with, who you've, who you've empathized with. Think about those stories and those characters. Storytelling profoundly affects our society and our humanity. And we as actors, our job is to represent the human condition on stage and on screen. So social issues should very much be a part of our lives and should be important to us as actors. And today we're talking about specifically the social issue of racial injustice. Now, it's one thing to acknowledge that injustice exists. It's a whole nother thing to make an effort to do something about it. So what can we do? Well, in America, one of the most powerful things that we can do is to vote. If you're over 18 and, and you've never voted before, then the first step is to register to vote. It's very easy. I've put a link to register to vote in your state down in the description of this video. So go click that if you haven't registered yet. Most of the people that watch my YouTube videos are between the ages of 18 and 30. Historically, this demographic is the, most, is the least likely to vote. Even if half of the 18 to 30 year olds voted in the next election, it would dramatically change the outcome. So your vote absolutely does matter and can change things. What else can we do besides voting? Because voting kind of puts the responsibility on the elected officials after we're done. Well, we can take that responsibility on ourselves. You and I can take that responsibility. We can speak up and speak out against injustice. Speak up any time you see injustice. Speak up any time you see racism. We can do this. And racism doesn't always show up as someone wearing a white hood and a swastika tattoo. Racism sometimes shows up as a manager at a company who casually throws around the N-word at work. That's something that I experienced when I was in college working a summer job. And I didn't speak up at the time, and I should have. I can do better. I should do better. We can all do better. We, we can show up and we can be there for our black friends. We can be there for any of our friends who are facing discrimination or hate or injustice. And if all of your friends and the people in your social circle are people that look like you and talk like you and think like you, then make an effort to expand that circle. Make an effort to get out of that bubble. Start having conversations with people that are different from you. We fear that which we do not understand. And we can make an effort to better educate ourselves and better understand so that we have less fear in our hearts. And if you are someone who wants to make a difference, but you're afraid of doing something because you're afraid of doing the wrong thing and you're afraid of you're, you're afraid you're going to make a mistake, don't be. This isn't easy and and 
there's no exact right way to do things. And we've learned throughout life that making mistakes leads to growth. I told you at the beginning of this video that I wasn't sure if this was the right thing to do. I was debating whether or not I should make this video. And I'm still not sure, but I'm making it anyway. So this is a complicated issue. Racial injustice is not something easy. And uh, it's a complicated issue to tackle and to try to fix. There's no easy fix. There's no formula to fix it. If it were easy and there were a formula, it would have been done a long time ago. And like I said, I don't have all the answers, but I will continue to do and to say what I believe in. And that is that black lives do matter, that racism is a problem, and that racism does not belong in this world. Sexism does not belong in this world. Homophobia does not belong in this world. Any sort of injustice does not belong in this world. This is going to be an ongoing fight for equality and for justice, and we have a lot of work to do. That's it. I want to thank you for uh, spending this time with me and allowing me to share some of these thoughts with you. And until next time, stay safe, take care of one another, be kind to one another, and I do still hope to see you on set one day.